Okay, y'all, I have a special yet short video to share with you guys. I was looking up Daryl Brooks on the internet, and I don't know how I didn't come across this sooner, but it was, uh, I think it was, actually I don't remember when it was um, aired. I think it was in April or something like that. Um, so it's one of the jurors, well, there's two jurors. One is from the Daryl Brooks case and one is from another high pro, high profile murder case. Um, and they both speak about their thoughts and all that type of stuff. But I thought you guys would like to hear this and, uh, hear my reaction to it. So let's watch. 23 News had the rare opportunity to talk exclusively to a juror from not one, but arguably the two most high profile murder trials in the region this past year. Uh, the jury is now in the courtroom. And Many consider it the ultimate civic duty. Once I realized the impact that this was going to have on the community, I kind of wanted to serve. We the jury find the defendant. But it also comes with the ultimate responsibility. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, like, this guy's life is dependent uh, on what we decide. So it was a bit overwhelming. Tess Lucchini had never served on a jury. I had no idea, Mike, like, how many people are involved for a case like this. Until this Winnebago mother of two joined a jury of 12 for one of the most high-profile federal trials in the state line. Oh my gosh, it's nothing like TV. Absolutely nothing like TV. Tess and her peers were chosen to decide the fate of Floyd Brown, the downstate Illinois man charged with killing McHenry County Deputy Jacob Keltner in 2019 at a Rockford motel. I knew a little. So I see that the gentleman is the one from the Daryl Brooks trial. He's the juror from that. She's from the trial of Floyd Brown, who killed a McHenry County officer that's just that's just so sad that's really sad the senseless deaths that are going on are just ridiculous though because that day i happened to be working and where it happened is just down the street and we actually had to go on lockdown because of the movies that large Lucchini said she didn't know much more than that, and she assured the judge and attorneys she would be an impartial juror. I'm a firm believer in there's always there's always two sides to a story, so I I just let him went in there with an open mind. The trial lasted a week and a half, and it took just two and a half hours for the jury to reach a verdict. The jury found Floyd Brown guilty of second degree murder. It was pretty tough for the first couple months, knowing that I that we decided this man's fate. But, you know, we all make choices in life, and he made the wrong choice, unfortunately. From the biggest trial in the state line in 2022. Your life is not on the line. Mine is. To the biggest in the Midwest. You have the power to nullify any law that you don't agree with. Waukesha Parade murder suspect Daryl Brooks defended himself which made it an incredible experience for Scott as juror number six. Well, isn't this jackass a loser, Daryl Brooks? Oh my God, I wonder if this juror can't stand him as much as everybody else can't stand him. I didn't have any expectations, so, you know, being my first time, this could have been normal, but it, you could tell it wasn't normal. You don't know what I'm so trying to do. the jury out, I'm not going to argue with you. Then, so. then don't. The strange happenings began even before the trial did, when each side had 10 strikes to whittle the jury down to 12 plus two alternates. He wanted to strike all 24 of us, and he ended up moving to a different courtroom, and they pulled out a bingo wheel, and they just randomly selected 10 people for his strikes. Scott said Judge Jennifer Doro did a phenomenal job of keeping the courtroom in as much order as possible. This man right now is having a stare down with me. It's very disrespectful. It's frankly, it makes me scared. I felt bad for her because, you know, he just 
went rogue and did whatever he wanted and wasn't about to to listen and it was a this power struggle the jury was sequestered during deliberations which went about three hours over two days before convicting brooks on all 76 counts including six counts of first degree intentional homicide everybody agreed it was it was pretty straightforward both Scott and Tess said one of the hardest things about serving on a jury was not being able to talk about the case to anyone until closing arguments were made. You are listening to all this stuff and, and you want, after you're done, you want to talk to somebody about it, like, but you can't. You know, did you get, did you hear this or did you hear that or what did you think about this? You can't say a single thing. To finally get into that deliberation room and finally getting to release the feelings that you have pent up over the last four or five weeks to be able to actually talk about it. And that was, that was a great relief. So the free times when they couldn't discuss the case involved conversations about family, life dreams, and personal triumphs and tribulations. We developed a lot of great bonds, a lot of inside jokes, and we have a little contact group and we still keep in contact today. I saw one fellow and um, we saw each other in Woodman's and it was like we were long lost friends. We like hugged and like, and we started to talk about it and how, how upsetting it had been. I really did connect with a lot of them. You absolutely have to, because it's not an easy thing to do. Both Tess and Scott said they were part of a diverse jury ranging in age from the mid twenties to the mid seventies. That was definitely very interesting. I must say, um, I didn't know about the, him trying to strike all 24 potential jurors, but that's true Daryl Brooks fashion right there, of course. I would like to know some more stories, honestly. I'm sure we'll hear, we will hear more in time, but let me know what you guys think about this. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment down below.